No procrastinating. All right, here it is. Um, one five is adding and subtracting real numbers. Adding and subtracting real numbers, okay? Um, what we're gonna do with this, a lot of it is you're gonna look at it and go, I know how to do this, and that's fine. Um, but I want you to understand why we do it the way we do it, okay? Um, so we are adding and subtracting real numbers. This should not be all new information to you. It should be mostly review information, I believe. Um, but we're going to start with a number line. So when we add real numbers, I'm going to show you what that looks like on a number line. And then we'll do it without a number line. So let's say I have 3 plus 5. Okay, and I know that you look at that and you go, duh, it's eight. That's great, okay? But I want you to understand why it's eight so that when we get into negatives and subtracting and all of that stuff, Michael, will you put that away? Um, I know, why are you, you don't need it right now. Okay, well, put it away. Um, I don't know what I was just saying. Anyway, we're gonna do it on a number line. Um, so I want to show you how this works with a number line. So a number line is just going to be something like that. When we do adding on a number line, your first number is always where you're going to start. Okay, so this number here is your starting point on the number line. So on your number line, you're going to put a little hash mark and a three, but here's what I want you to think about, okay? We're adding a positive number, and when you add a positive, you move to the right on your number line, so that means your three, your starting number, should be somewhere closer to the left. Okay, so here's where we're starting. We're gonna add five to it, so we go this way, five units, one, two, three, four, five, and that puts us here. Well, if you're counting that, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is where we end up, right? So three plus five is eight. That would be your answer, okay? Which I know seems very simple because you guys know what three plus five is. Where it gets a little more, um, you just have to pay a little better attention to it, I guess you would say, is when you start adding negatives into that, okay? So let's say we're doing, instead of three plus five, we're gonna do three plus a negative five, okay? That means we are going to start at three again. But now it's a negative five. And when you add a negative number, do you move to the right on a number line or to the left? To the left, okay? So when you add a negative, we're going to the left now. So we're gonna start with our three over here. Okay, that's our starting point. And then we're gonna go five to the left. One, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be our answer. From 3, we moved 5 to the left. Now think about what number that is. 3, 2, 1, here's 0, right? So negative 1, negative 2. So your answer, 3 plus a negative 5, is negative 2. Okay? Keep in mind, we always start at that first number. Okay, what if it's like this instead? Let's say it's negative 3 and we're gonna add five. What's our starting point? Negative three. Okay, so on the number line, we're gonna plot a negative three. And then if I'm adding five, am I moving to the right or to the left? Moving to the right. So plus five is gonna go to the right. One, two, three, four, five. So this is gonna be my answer, right? Go five to the right, which puts you where? At two, right? This would be zero, this would be two, so your answer is two. Okay, last one. Any guesses what this question is gonna look like? Negative three plus negative five. Negative five. Um, so for this one, again, you're starting at negative three, but we're going to the left, so put your negative three over here, and then plus a negative five, one, two, three, 
four, five, right? That's a negative eight that we end up at. So negative three plus a negative five is a negative eight. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Plus a positive. Yep. We'll get there in just a little bit. Okay. Um, so those are the number line setups that you're going to need to know. A positive plus a positive, a positive plus a negative, a negative plus a positive, and a negative plus a negative. All right? So when they ask you to do it on a number line, this is what they want to see. Okay? All right. Um, can you tell me anything about absolute value? Anyone know what absolute value is? Anyone know what symbol is attached with absolute value? Michael, you don't need your iPad right now. What's the symbol that we use for absolute value? Do you know? I'm guessing you've seen absolute value before. It's two bars, right? So if I talk about the absolute value of negative three, it would look like that, okay? Absolute value, what it does is it's always a distance from zero. Um, so distance from zero on a number line. Okay, so think about a number line. Here's zero. If I go to negative three or I go to positive three, my distance here is three units. Yes, I'm at a negative three, but the distance away, it's three units away, okay? Um, so if I go this way, how many units am I away that way? Three. three, okay? So the absolute value is always a positive number. It's always just how far away are you? I can't be negative three away. I'm gonna be three units away. So when we say what's the absolute value of negative four, what's your answer? Four. What if I said what's the absolute value of seven? What's your answer? Seven. seven, okay? So it always becomes the positive. Okay, um, with that, that's what leads us into how you add um, different sets of numbers. Okay, so if we are adding numbers with the same sign, so they're both positive or they're both negative, okay? Adding numbers with the same sign, there's a rule that goes along with it. When you're adding numbers with the same sign, all you do is you add the absolute value and then you keep the sign that you started with, okay? So you're going to add their absolute values and keep their sign. which might sound like gibberish to you right now, but let me explain what that means, okay? If I have something like three plus four, okay? The absolute value of three is three. The absolute value of four is four. So I'm gonna add three plus four, and I'm gonna keep the sign of those numbers. Are three and four positive or negative? They're positive, so I'm gonna leave it as a positive, right? The same is true when it's negatives. If I do negative three plus negative four, the absolute value of negative three is what? Three. Positive three. The absolute value of negative four is positive four. So the sum of them is seven, right? But then you keep the sign of the two numbers. So they were both negative, so I'm gonna make it negative from their absolute value. Okay? Yes. No, no, no. Their absolute value is saying because they're both negative numbers, right, we're going to add the absolute value. So add three and four, which is seven, but keep the sign that they had. So they were both negative, so we're going to make it negative, right? So negative three plus a negative four is a negative seven. Uh, it's just this is the way you kind of think of it. Add them together, but then keep the sign that you had. 
okay? If they're both negative, you make it negative. If they're both, po sorry, yes, if they're both positive, it's gonna be positive, okay? That's if the sign is the same on both your sets of numbers. The second thing we're gonna talk about is if you have a different sign. So now we're gonna do adding numbers with different signs. Okay, and this one's different. If you're adding numbers that have different signs, now instead of adding their absolute value, you actually subtract their absolute values, okay? So we're gonna subtract their absolute values and you're gonna keep the sign of the bigger absolute value. Okay, subtract their absolute values, but keep the sign of the bigger absolute value. So here's how it goes. If they have different signs, so let's say we have three plus a negative four. So one is positive, one is negative. God bless you. What you actually do is this problem. You take the absolute values and you subtract them, right? Four minus three is one. I need to know what sign I put in front of that one. So you look at your two numbers. We had three and we had negative four. Which one's the bigger absolute value? The negative four is the bigger absolute value, right? When it becomes positive, four would be bigger. So that one was negative. So our answer is negative. It's just if the number behind the negative is bigger than the number. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a negative, it's automatically less than what? A negative, it is the negative numbers bigger. I'm saying the absolute value of that number. So if we made it positive, four is bigger than three, right? So we want to take the sign that's with the four. And in this case, that's a negative number. Okay, I'll show you again. Um, okay, so like this, if I said negative three plus four, okay? One is positive, one is negative. So we subtract them, right? If they have different signs, we subtract. So four minus three is one. Is that going to be a positive one or a negative one? Positive. positive, because our bigger absolute value, right? This is three as an absolute value. This is four as an absolute value. This one's bigger. Our bigger absolute value was positive. So my answer is positive. Okay? Okay, we're going to do a few of those. So this is example two. Let's say we have negative 12 plus 7, okay? So first thing you have to ask yourself is do they have the same sign or do they have different signs? What is this? Different, different signs, okay? So when they're different, do you add or subtract? Dustin, stop. You subtract, right? Um, so you're going to think of this problem as 12 minus 7. What is 12 minus 7? Five. Okay, so now here's what you have to figure. We subtracted them. We want the sign of the bigger absolute value. Would that be 12 or 7? 12. 12. That sign is a negative, so my answer is negative 5. Okay, so subtract them. Take the sign of the bigger one when they are absolute valued. Okay, how about this one? Let's say we have negative 16 plus a negative 4. Do they have the same sign or different signs? Same. same. When you have the same sign, do you add or subtract? Add. add. Okay. So we're going to do 16 plus 4 is what? 20. 20. 
And what sign do we attach to it? Negative. negative, because they were both negative numbers, right? If they're both negative, then your answer is negative. So you add them together and keep the sign. Okay? How about this one? 9 plus a negative 11. Okay? Same sign or different sign? Different. So when they're different, you add or subtract? Subtract. subtract. So it's going to be 11 minus 9 is 2. Okay? Do you make it positive or negative? Negative. Negative because your bigger absolute value is negative. Okay? So your answer is negative 2. Okay? So same sign, add them together. Different signs, Josiah. Different signs, subtract them. Okay? And then keep the sign of your bigger absolute value, or if they're the same sign, keep the sign that was in the problem. Okay? Okay. Um, opposites. What's the opposite of 7? Negative. negative 7. What's the opposite of negative 14? 14, okay? So in math, when we talk about opposites, we're talking positives versus negatives, right? Um, so there's a property that says if you add opposites, like negative 6 plus a positive 6, you will always get what? Zero. zero, right? Whenever you add opposites, you will always get zero. So 13 plus a negative 13 is zero. That is called the inverse property of addition, okay? Inverse property of addition says if you add opposites, you always get zero, okay? Okay, so that's adding. The only other thing I have for you is subtracting, but you do it the same way because we turn our subtraction problem into an addition problem, okay? So you're not really learning a new principle here. You're learning how to change your equation here, okay? Um, so let me show you. Instead of saying for a problem here, instead of saying 3 minus 5, we're going to change that problem to an addition problem. Can anyone do that for me? 3 plus what? A negative 5, right? So this becomes 3 plus a negative 5, and now that's exactly what we just did in examples 1 and 2. Okay, so when you see subtraction, think of it as addition, and then you'll be golden. Okay, let's do a few of those. Um, example 3. Let's say I give you the problem negative 8 minus a negative 10. And I don't remember who said this, but someone said it earlier. When you subtract a negative, isn't it the same as adding a positive? This is where that happens, right? To turn this into an addition problem, minus a negative is plus a positive. So our problem that we're solving is negative 8 plus 10. Okay? Do I add or subtract those numbers? Yeah. When they're opposites, you subtract them, right? So you would do 10 minus 8 is 2. What sign do I give that to? Is it positive or negative? Positive. It's positive because my bigger absolute value was positive, right? The 10 was positive. So this is a positive 2. So negative 8 minus a negative 10 is 2. Okay? Uh, like here, you mean? Yeah. So it was minus a negative 10, so we made it plus a positive 10, because minus a negative is the same as plus a positive. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, but how many did you say? Right, okay. Because we're not subtracting the negative 8, it's negative 8 minus something. So when you subtract something, minus a negative is what becomes plus a positive. So it's never going to be that first one that you change the sign on. It's the one that comes after that, okay? Um, okay, how about this? How do you do 2.6 minus 8.5? Okay. 
Okay, if I want to turn that into an addition problem, what would it look like? So minus a positive, right? Minus a positive 8.5 is the same as, instead of minus a negative, now it's minus a positive. That becomes plus a negative, okay? So right now it's minus a positive. We're going to turn it into 2.6 plus a negative 8.5, okay? So look at your signs. One is positive, one is negative. Do we add them or subtract them? You subtract those, okay? So it's going to be 8.5 minus 2.6, which is 5.9. Is your answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because this is the bigger number, and it is negative, okay? So that's a negative 5.9, okay? All right, last one of this set of problems. I have one last problem beyond this. If I give you 12 minus 12, if you were going to rewrite that as an addition problem, what would it look like? 12 minus a negative. Plus a negative, plus right. 12 plus a negative 12. And when you add opposites, what do we get? Zero. zero. So 12 plus a negative 12 is zero. Okay. Okay, last question. Um, and this one, you don't necessarily need to write down because um, it's a lot of words and I don't want to make you do a lot of words. So here's what it is, okay? It's a diver going to take pictures. It's a photographer, okay? The diver starts, gets in the water, and he dives 25 feet, okay? So he dives down 25 feet, takes a picture, then he comes up 16 feet um, to get over a little reef, okay? Then he dives down again 47 feet to take another picture and then comes up 29 feet to see a cave. I want to know relative to sea level, so where he got in the water, where is he now? Can you set up an equation for me? So where is sea level? How many feet? Zero, right? So we're starting at zero. If he dove down 25 feet, what are we doing? Subtracting. Subtracting, okay? So we're subtracting 25. Then he went up 16. What are we doing? Plus. Plus. We're adding. So plus 16. Okay? Then he dove down 47. What are we doing? Minus 47. Hey, go pace in the back or something. Move around so you don't move your mouth. Um, so up 16, down 47, okay, and then up again, so plus 29, okay? So that's the problem we are trying to solve. We want to turn it into a fully addition problem, okay? So minus 25 is really like saying zero plus a negative 25, plus 16, plus a negative 47, plus 29. Okay, so we turned all our minuses into plus a negatives, right? Okay, from here, it's easiest. Remember all the properties we did? Commutative, associative, all that? We're going to use those properties right now. So when you add, you can add in any order and you still get the same thing. So I'm gonna put my negatives together, and I'm gonna put my positives together, okay? So we can move it so that it's zero plus, and then I'm gonna do my positive numbers, 16 plus 29 plus, and then I'm gonna put my negatives together, negative 25 plus negative 47, okay? Now from here, we simplify. So in PEMDAS, what would we do next? 
add what? Uh, 16, and 16 and 29. So it's going to be 0 plus, this would be 45. And then add your negatives. What's negative 25 plus negative 47? Do you add those or subtract those? When they have the same sign, you add them, right? So 25 and 47 gives you 72. And the sign is negative, so we're going to keep it negative. Okay, so it's 0 plus 45 plus a negative 72. What's 0 plus 45? 45. Plus negative 72. Do you add or subtract those? Subtract. subtract them. So 72 minus 45, you get 27. Is that positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because your bigger number was the negative, right? So it's negative 27 as your answer. What does that mean? It means he's still underwater. He's underwater. How far? 27 feet. So he is 27 feet below sea level right now. Okay, so a negative 27 represents 27 feet underwater. Okay, questions on that? All right, that is it. Um, you are welcome to use your calculators on this stuff as a check. I want you to try it without your calculator and then plug it into your calculator to check your answer. But I want you to try it without, okay? Because um, I want you to understand the concept. Good?